Hello and welcome you with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow, ETNAS daily initiative that celebrates the undying entrepreneurial spirit of micro, small and medium enterprises. On the show today, to answer all of your queries, we have a panel of experts. First up, I have Sri Rangthambi, he's the founder and CEO of Origa, and we also have Sushant Mitra, founder and CEO of Lead Angels. Gentlemen, thank you both very much for being with us here tonight. Our first query is an email coming to us uh, from Yogesh Mehta. He's written in to us to say, is there any provision to know uh, what requirements an organization needs to meet in order uh, to start their own venture? Is there a checklist of what is considered hygiene before uh, companies start to ensure smooth rollout of operations? Uh, in our previous episode, we were talking about hygiene in terms of finance hygiene. But there is also hygiene of things that a company should know before they start. And I think this is the first time we're getting a query of this nature where someone wants to know even before they start rather than a few years into the business and say that, hey, we didn't realize that this should have been done. So is there anything that they should necessarily keep in mind? Maybe the top two, three, four, five things? Like before starting any activity, you must have a plan. So, you know, if you don't have a, you know, you either have a plan or you plan to fail. So that's the first thing is that you need to have a plan. Is what the organization is going to do? How will it be able to, what are the resources it needs to be able to achieve what it wants to achieve and how the organization will get those resources. And the resources could be financial, uh, human resources, technology and so on and so forth. So at least maybe a three year plan and also look at what are the possible risks that the company may face in that in those three years and how the company may want to mitigate those risks as they come along and so that is number one specifically you know in india we have a huge set of rules hopefully with the government reducing some of them but compliance is a very critical part of an operation of a company and we do advise startups before they start to know what are the laws that they will you know fall under what are the taxes they will have to pay and prepare for that as well in addition to what he said i would just would want to emphasize on one point a lot of startups do not have execution plan and there's a difference between a business plan that they present to an investor and their own execution plan as to how they are going to go about achieving what they are committing to the investors or planning to commit to the investors. So uh, the key document that, that is missed out um, by many is uh, on the road execution plan. And I think that is very, very important for uh, Indian startups. Um, and if they, if they get that right, even at least 50%, then they're off the ground. Um, actually off the ground. All right, fair enough. Uh, I hope that answers your query and all the very best uh, if you're starting out your own venture. Let's take in the next one. This is a call coming to us from B, uh, from P. Bhatnagar. Go ahead. Basically, we are consultants carrying out technical interiors and infrastructure for control rooms, data centers, clean rooms, etc. So we are interested in entering into smart cities and digital India. So I would like to know which body, which centralized authority should I contact for getting registered my name with all such bodies? Thanks very much for that query, uh, Patnagar. So essentially, his uh, query is that he wants to be a larger part of Digital India and whether there's any organization that can help him towards that. Similar to there being a lack of clarity, I think, in some sense about, you know, whether you approach, you know, how you approach the Mudra Bank, uh, how do you approach SIDBI, what do you need to do? Digital India, which the government is pushing and can be hugely beneficial to MSMEs. Uh, is there a checklist in terms of what you can do, what you should be doing and how you go about participating? See, a lot about Digital India is available on digitalindia.gov.in, right? I think the fundamental question here is what are you offering as a business or as an MSME? to the Digital India Initiative because the, uh, the role of the government is to lay down a framework, a lay down a path, but the government is not going to come and tell you do this business and do that business. They will lay down an end objective. Okay, I want to make India digitally literate, but it's up to entrepreneurs to go up to them and say, I have this plan which is brilliant and I'm going to make, make now dig uh, India digitally literate. So, what entrepreneurs need to understand is government is not going to give them the business plans. They are going to give them the roadmap. And you need to bring in the business plan to achieve the roadmap. Uh, exactly. I think the 
what he needs to figure out is there are of course websites where he can go and get that information, but essentially to figure out which way the smart cities will come up or which way the digital India campaign will go and be able to find gaps in those programs and be able to provide goods and services which fulfill that gap. So, the job that he needs to do is to do a gap analysis and see what is available, what is missing and can I produce or provide one of those things which are missing in these two programs of the government of India. Okay. Uh, that's in response to your query, but Nagar, and I hope that answers your query. Do have a thorough checklist in place uh, as you go about participating in Digital India. Let's take in the next query, and this is a call as well. It's coming to us from the line of Prakash Agarwal. Go ahead, Prakash. What is the safety of the investor in investing in startup companies? Is there any rating agency available to rate the startups or the reports which they make is sufficient? Prakash, thanks very much uh, for that. Uh, and uh, is this something that you ask yourself, saying how do we protect uh, <laughs> ourselves on investments that possibly go wrong? Is there yes. a mechanism to yes. do that? Yes, you have, you have credit rating agencies which look at you know companies taking a loan. And you also have, I think, ratings of um, companies going for public issues. But for companies which are in the private market looking for uh, venture or any other funding, there are no real rating systems which are available and therefore each investor or a group of investors do their own review and understand uh, the intricacies of the business before taking an investment decision. Uh, so if, if uh, Prakash wants to uh, sort of uh, get involved in uh, angel investing or in any other type of investing that he may contact you know angel networks and others where he can participate which is in a way the rating process so the angels get together and review a company and therefore decide whether it is investment grade worth investing or not and that is what uh, these agencies do and he may want to be a part of one of those. Sure. Shareholder agreements which are negotiated between the company and the funds or um, investors is a privately negotiated agreement uh, and hence all the protection that an investor gets is through that agreement and uh, once that agreement is entered into between the two parties both parties exactly know what can go wrong and if things go wrong what is the recourse to that basically and it has all the legal it has all the legal clauses that you you would want to have so uh, I think that is the protection for an investor and I am actually uh, feeling very good that an entrepreneur is asking what is the protection for an investor <laughs> because uh, it is always the investor should ask what is my protection uh, but that is that's really interesting. So entrepreneurs are actually thinking that okay this is a capital I am getting I am in a fiduciary duty towards this capital and I should make it work. So congratulations then uh, to Prakash uh, on that query and uh, I do hope that answers your query. Let's take in our next query. Uh, this is coming to us from Ali Momin. He's written to us uh, uh, on email and says that he would like to grow his business in smart cities and smart city hubs, which the government of course has been uh, uh, talking about and propagating. He wants to know which the bodies are that can be contacted, which will help his business grow. This again goes back to uh, information in that sense or a checklist if I may call it that uh, about smart cities but specifically for those who are interested in smart cities and I assume that Ali is in the infrastructure space, what advice would you have? Again he needs to go through the programs that government plans to launch in smart cities. So, For example, if you take an infrastructure as an example, uh, what a smart city would actually need, require in terms of infrastructure is going to be water, energy, sanitation and absolute basic services. Uh, which are of highest standards, right? So, how Ali is going to work with the government in providing those services in those smart cities as a vendor or as a contractor or as a company uh, and that is what he needs to figure out. So, for example, if you go to smartcities.gov.in, on the contact us page, you have all the officers listed including their email IDs and these are urban development officers listed uh, on the website. So today the access 
to to the government with respect to smart cities is so high that if you have an engagement model you will be definitely be able to figure out your business model mm. just before i come to you on that i want to understand from you is this an opportunity which msmes can tap or is the the quantum of capital that you need to uh, participate in smart cities isn't that much higher so that's so you know the interesting point here is even if a large company backs this contract they will require 10 msmes to supply and subcontract the work so there is always a ripple effect in the economy so it will never happen that only a billion dollar conglomerate comes and takes away everything and the, it nothing will be left for msmes or smes because they would require suppliers or subcontractors to do the work so there definitely there will be a ripple effect in the economy absolutely i think so it's not just meant for big companies or uh, you know multinational companies who will benefit from this program you know even if you're you know providing uh, services to the contractors or or particular sub assemblies for for the products or whatever they are supplying you would have an opportunity okay so that's in response to your uh, query uh, ali let's take a very quick break though on this note uh, lots more on the other side to stay tuned Welcome back with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow and we're continuing to take in all of your queries at the end of the show we'll tell you how you can reach us so do stay tuned let's take in the next query and this is coming to us from the line of Sylvester Rodriguez go ahead Sylvester I would like to know how small and medium enterprises today can leverage the power of social media tools and technology to generate new inquiries and business for their businesses All right so uh This is not a query that we get very often in terms of how MSMEs can go about uh, using social media, and I think we should first of all congratulate Sylvester that he uh, is not in some sense put off by it or threatened by it, but says it can be an ally. So, can you walk him through what he should keep in mind? Yeah. So, it's very interesting that Sylvester is thinking thinking on these lines because social media tools or online marketing tools are one of the best tools he can. use because as an SME or an MSME you have a very limited budget and a traditional advertising or branding or marketing exercises do not give you uh, the analysis of the results of your spent however if he goes on social media or if he goes on on uh, online for his marketing and advertising he will be able to calculate return on investment for every penny he spends on that exercise and and uh he can he will be able to reach far larger audience with the same amount of money that he would have uh, reached uh, in the traditional methods of advertising so i think uh, this is again a revolution and i personally believe every msme or sme should capitalize this um, to the fullest absolutely i think the like many other businesses the the media business is also going through a huge uh, change and you know traditional media like print and others are getting uh, are not are not either not growing or 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 growing as fast as they used to in the past and they've been been overtaken by online and and so on and so forth so i think uh, it also gives a level playing field for larger and you know small companies uh, as far as online uh, tools are concerned and it you you can it's more affordable for smaller companies to use these compared to traditional media but going deeper into the problem is that he needs to understand it <coughs> if required take professional help so that he can leverage it because a lot of people think that um, you know social media is buying google adwords which can actually be end up being pretty expensive as well and not useful so he needs to study and and take professional help before he sort of jumps into the online bandwagon our next one is coming to us uh, from sr gopal he's written to us on facebook he says he's a technology based company and uh, that he's been in existence for over 15 years now but from his experience no one really cares about older companies in the wake of startups and um, he's written to us to ask us uh, what our experts suggest in terms of staying relevant uh, is this a valid concern in india the average age of an entrepreneur 
in the Silicon Valley is in the 40s, whereas the average age of an entrepreneur startup here in India is in the 20s. So, there is this um, sort of age uh, gap. And uh, because a lot of technologies are new and a lot of these are disruptive, prior experience does not really um, sort of uh, can establish whether you will succeed in that business or not. So, a lot of new businesses which have come up in India in the last say five years have all been and some very successful ones have been founded by very young founders or and, and very young companies as well. Uh, having said that, uh, A, there is already a move, I think VCs and, and investors including us do realize the value of experience and, and so on. So, there is a move towards investing in people with greater domain ex experience, especially in those areas which are more traditional in nature. So, that is one. Two, uh, I do not think that uh, if you have an innovative product or if a company is 15 years old and it has an innovative product, it will not get uh, the attention of uh, investors and VCs. I think it's all about reviewing your business model and uh, staying up with times. You know, so again, I come back to my point, saying that there will always be disruption in technology in all business models. It's up to the entrepreneur to decide how he wants to uh, take it forward. Okay, uh, so Gopal. Uh that's in response to your query uh, in terms of staying relevant at a time when we have a plethora of startups. Let's take in our next query. This is coming to us from the line of S. Prakash. Prakash, go ahead. My question is, uh, whenever you hear the location Mysore for any startup or any kind of venture from any perspective, what kind of a uh, uh, reaction uh, we can expect? Uh, how do you think of it, uh, look, Mysore as a location, both positives and negatives? Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks for that uh, query, Prakash. So, essentially, uh, he's talking about uh, Mysore. Uh, you can call it a tier 2 in Karnataka, but maybe you can broad base it and talk about tier 2 cities and towns as well, uh, towns more than cities. And the benefits really of working from a tier 2 in terms of cost perhaps versus the disadvantages of being there perhaps because you're far away from clients. I think the, the decision to go to a, a tier 2 city should, and especially in a software development company where you're primarily dependent on, on on people, right? It's it's a very very people dependent business. So the availability of people in the city that or town that he wishes to go, it would be a critical factor in deciding. So if that the city or the town has enough engineering colleges and and are, is able to produce the you know in 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 the type of numbers that he is looking for then he can look at these tier 2 cities. Uh, what, what people also find is that, you know, being not very far away from a major metro, say for example, like a Mysore, Mysore is, you know, not too many hours away from Bangalore, gives you both the benefits of a, a low cost uh, uh, center for operating and, you know, in terms of market access in a metro which is not too far away. So, you know, to that extent, Mysore has both the advantages. For me, the biggest factor is talent. Uh, and if they, if they are able to identify a tier 2 city where they get the right set of talent for their business, they should go. But today, the biggest challenge every MSME or SME company is facing in India is getting a talent and more importantly, retaining the talent. Uh, so, uh, what's the guarantee that the guy they, they will get in Mysore will not shift to Bangalore in six months' time? So, I think talent is the biggest question they should answer. All, all right, uh, Prakash, that's in response to your query. Let's also quickly take in the next query. This is also a call which is coming to us from the line of Manish Kokani. Go ahead, Manish. Yeah, my query is that startups are waiting for a comprehensive paperwork in terms of entry and exit policy, incentives, and funding. 
where can we get a one stop solution for the same uh, and i assume that manish uh, when he's talking about a white paper in terms of an entry and exit policy is pretty much talking about venture capitalists and private equity firms uh, uh, is there anything that you know you can sort of guide him in terms of what he should be keeping his eye on right so uh, you know i think you know google has become the um, the place for all all uh, all the things that you want to know and uh, there are uh, very detailed uh, sort of documents available on on multiple sites about how to get funding uh, what are the things that you need how to choose an investor what are the things that you need to have ready before you go to one and what to do thereafter once you get the investment so there are uh, you know there's enough places to be able to 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 to, to do that that uh, specifically in terms of exit entry and exit policies i'm assuming that he means the sort of agreements that investors have with their investee companies and and samples of those are also available freely on the web for him to have a look I think another angle that Manish should consider is a white paper from a regulatory perspective. I think most importantly, ease of doing business. More than that, ease of closing down a business, uh, because closing down a business is difficult uh, in a country like India. Uh, so uh, he should look at various regulations that are coming up or are available, uh, and then see what business he plans to carry out uh, and. Uh, then take a call whether uh, is it comprehensive enough for him or as he said there are a lot of matter available where he would be getting inputs but getting everything at one place uh, may be difficult because uh, it may it may vary from business to business segment to segment um, and so he may not find everything at one place except regulatory matters he might find regulatory matters at one place but not on the business side All right gentlemen thank you as always very much for coming down to our studios and answering all of our viewers queries uh, you too can of course write in to us send us your uh, queries which our panel of experts will answer you can write in to us at leadersoftomorrow@timesgroup.com you can reach us on social media using the hashtag #lot or call us with your queries on that number that you see on the screens thanks for watching have a good night